My Girlfriend Talks in Her Sleep, Part 2. My hands tremble over the keyboard, and I may have a concussion, so please forgive any typos or brevity of my update. It is the morning after my typically amenable and kind-hearted girlfriend's body was possessed in sleep by some malicious entity. I've been distant this morning, so she knows something is amiss, but obviously still reeling from the experience. I can't tell her yet that she tried to rip out my throat and shit down my neck. You understand, I'm tired. Obviously I didn't sleep last night, but I did stay up most of the night with all of the lights on feverishly clutching my water bottle in the living room. The demonic beast inside my GF managed to creep its way back into control sometime soon after I exited the room and pinned it closed with a dining room chair. Given her eye movements and the activation delay, my theory is that the beast is allowed control during REM, but what do I know? It spent most of the evening attempting to coax me back into the bedroom, this time with a pinch more emotional intelligence, calling out to me in what was as close to my GF's normal voice as it could manage. Come to bed, sweetie. Why are you sleeping on the couch again? I decide I'm not going to validate this demon with a response, but moments later, the two deep, sinister voice is back. If you don't open this door, I will slit the cat's throat. Fuck. I forgot about the cat. He's still in the bedroom, probably cowering in fear, hissing in the corner to no avail. My guess is that the cat is already dead, but what can I do? Let our beloved kitty be eaten alive by someone he trusts? I've seen enough horror movies to know that this is the moment I have to decide to do something dumb and heroic, or die on screen while everyone yells about how much of an idiot I am for opening the door. I may have a little more sympathy for these characters now, People thrust into impossible situations are forced to make impossible choices. Against my better judgment, I'm going to open the door, get the cat out of the room. I'm staring at the bedroom door now, and notice something damp and muscly poking and prodding its way out from under the door. I point my phone's flashlight at it, and realize it's my girlfriend's tongue. I catch myself experiencing an intrusive thought. Wondering if she will want to know why her mouth is full of cat hair tomorrow. But this is perfect. I need to test out my new technique, a spray bottle full of sink water. I spray the tongue as it inchworms itself around the edge of the door, presumably looking for purchase on my human flesh. It immediately recoils, and I hear the body inside collapse. Water is still a demon possession off switch, I decide, and immediately tear the chair away from holding the door locked. I don't even have time to think about whether I have holy water on tap. I need to act fast. Attempting to open the door now, my SO's unconscious body is blocking me from entering. It requires quite a bit of force to slide her ragdoll body behind the door so I can squeeze through. Trying not to look too closely at her, I realize now that she is sweating a black oily substance and the bed and floor are totally drenched. I realize the reason it was so difficult to open the door, the demon's sweat is sticky. She may be stuck to the ground, carefully avoiding stepping in the demon superglue I'm now inside the bedroom. To my dismay, I don't see the cat right away. It makes sense. Frightened as hell, it must have crawled and hid under the bed. Yikes. I've got to persuade it out from under there now, but that will mean I need to get down on my belly and reach under the bed. Realizing the absurdity of my situation, I have one hand pointing a spray bottle at my dead-asleep girlfriend and one hand reaching under the bed to grab my cat. My eyes trained on my GF, I reach blindly under the dark bed. I can feel its soft fur. I wrap my hand around it and attempt to bring it towards me. It wriggles free from my grasp with evidently zero intention of making this easy. It crawls deeper under the bed. Frustrated, I take my eyes off my girlfriend to look where it went. No sign of it. I make the call to put the spray bottle down and point my phone flashlight under the bed. It's too deep underneath for me to get it from this side. I'm going to need to go around to the other side to capture it. Pulling my head back out from underneath the bed, I realize my fatal error. My girlfriend has woken up. She is standing over me, a dark tower as I lay vulnerable on the ground beside the bed. Her teeth look sharper from this angle in my phone's flashlight. Why didn't I turn on the bedroom light? She is drooling that black oily glue. Her hair, normally a gorgeous brown, is so glossed with black paste that it has slicked itself to her head like she just got out of the shower. Her eyes are menacing, wide open, bloodshot and yellow. 
She looks tired. I'm tired too. But it's time to go. The cat heroics can wait. Just as I'm about to scuttle an adrenaline-filled crawl around her legs and out the open door, she grabs both ankles with both of her arms. I remember her typically gentle touch is nowhere to be found in this grip as her nails dig shallow wounds into my legs. With inhuman strength, she begins raising my entire body weight by my legs, plainly in an attempt to start eating me alive from the toes up. Little does she know, I've never skipped a leg day in my life. I kicked my girlfriend square in her teeth with both feet. She drops me on my head, but I can't feel it. While she is stunned, I manage to get to my feet, carefully avoid the preternatural spiderweb paste, and exit the room. Hands shaking, I adjust the chair to the correct angle, just in time to hear agitated knocking on the other side. Baby, come back to bed. It's late. You're going to be so tired at work tomorrow. All of that and I didn't even get the damn cat out, and my spray bottle is still in there. What the hell am I going to do now?